Today I'm taking a look at the Mansfield Drive-In Flea Market in Mansfield, Connecticut. This flea market is held every Sunday, and as you can see, it's actually held at a drive-in movie theater. And uh, size-wise, I would say it's roughly the same size as the Elephant's Trunk Flea Market down in New Milford, Connecticut. This is the first time I've ever been to this flea market, and it's way bigger than I expected. So let's see what we can find. So I thought this was pretty cool. Over here, this board game, Rich Uncle. It's actually a spin-off of the Monopoly game. That's actually um, Uncle Pennybags, or Mr. Monopoly. And Monopoly came out in 1940. This came out in 1946 initially. And I believe this is the 1955 oh, yeah. edition of the game. Here. It's almost like a Monopoly type thing. Yes. Hmm. 1955. How much do you have on that? Well, I'm looking for 30. Okay. Yeah, never heard of it. With the box. I remember playing that game when I was a kid. Really? Yeah, wow. 19, 1955. Nice. And speak of the devil, there's Monopoly, a much newer version of the game, of course. Got a bunch of classic games here Etch a Sketch, Jenga, a whole bunch of other games that I'm sure most of you have played at some point in your life. Here's a nice set of Hallmark ornaments. I'm always looking for Star Wars or Star Trek ornaments, but uh, they're fairly hard to find. And he had a nice selection of comics here. It's always nice to see dollar okay. comics. Those are getting harder and harder to find nowadays. You know, with yeah. the prices of everything going up. See, this is kind of new. This is like two homeless people. They find a shack, but they also find a relationship. No, no, it's uh, Octavia Spencer and Tim McGraw, which is... I love seeing a box of old video games. These are old uh, Nintendo and Super Nintendo games. And uh, amazingly, they were priced, which I love to see. I'm not a huge collector of Nintendo games, so I'm not sure if these prices were good or not, but they seem to be in about the $5 to $10 range, so I don't think they were too bad. And um, one of the other things okay, you'll notice thanks. when you see <clears throat> games for sale is there's a lot of sports games. Uh, because for whatever reason, a lot of collectors don't like the sports games. They want to go for like Mario Brothers, Castlevania, like basically non-sport games. So this guy had, I don't know, I, I would say roughly 75% of these were sport games. And now this, you would think this is a um, like an electric train or something. It's actually, I think, an alcohol container. Looks like the alcohol would be kept in the um, the train cars. Little camera, not in the best condition. In fact, uh, pieces were falling off it. Five dollars each for five for twenty. And we we watched it happen. All the hot paper used together since 
an old uh, walkie-talkie looks like. Highly corroded though. All that green there is from corrosion, so it most likely doesn't work. But I remember, I remember all of those old glasses, Dr. Funk and the Scorpion Bowl stuff. And now Tidy Bear. <laughs> These posters are interesting. I don't recognize the titles. Uh, I assume they're from the early 1900s or so. No idea what that is. Now, I'm a huge collector of old computer games, and when I saw this, I knew I needed to have it. This is. Microsoft Flight Simulator for Windows 95, so it came out I think in 95 or 96. It's completely sealed, in great condition. Um, I couldn't find the guy when I took this video, but when I came back later he sold it to me for five bucks, so I think I got a good deal there. I'm not a skateboarder, but these boards were pretty cool. Love the designs on there. No idea how old they are. And here's an old Lionel uh, train set. I'm thinking this was from probably the early 70s, most likely. And it's in pretty good condition. He was only asking 50 bucks, which is probably a decent deal. And uh, this is one of those things where I kind of wish I had picked it up in hindsight. Good weekend, the rest of it. Here's something you don't see every day, a collection of books on watches. This old radio here really caught my eye. It's a Sony, and it's in practically mint condition from what I can tell. Just looking at it, it looked like a 1970s radio to me, but um, I took a closer look at it, and on the bottom you'll actually see there's a circular indent or a circular stamp which indicates the date, and from what I can tell it's from 1988. So that's a little bit too new for me. So this is kind of I would almost consider it a modern radio that is trying to look vintage, even though it's, what, 34 years old at this point? To me, that's modern. This record player here is interesting. It looks like it would only play 45s based on the size of it. So much cool stuff at that table there. That is so cool.
and I'm also a huge fan of Radio Shack stuff. So this radio controlled uh, Lamborghini was pretty interesting. I didn't see a year on it, but I would guess it's probably mid 80s. Just based on it uh, being a Lamborghini Countach. Nice collection of bottles here. They uh, they still have dirt on them, so I'm assuming they uh, dug these up somewhere, like from an old landfill. I wonder at what point um, the plastic bottles we use today are going to be considered antiques. This uh, mechanical keyboard was pretty cool. Uh, he only had it, I think, at $15 which seemed pretty cheap because not too long ago mechanical keyboards like this would cost you know minimum fifty hundred dollars but I ended up looking up uh, the prices online for this and they're only like twenty dollars new so it wasn't as great a deal as I thought it might be this big old uh, toy train here I think is a G gauge train set and I always thought these were just too big they look more like toys rather than like models, like a model train versus a toy train. I could be wrong, but I think these are reels for a player piano. Let me know if I'm wrong. I probably am. Here's an old transistor radio. Probably from the 60s. And I tried to get it out of its pouch to take a, cl a closer look at it, but it just wouldn't come out and I didn't want to break it. That was pretty cool. X-Men trading card game, still sealed. I think that's probably from about 2000. I've never been into uh, trading card games, personally. I think these were emblems on old cars, like a Mercedes emblem here. I'm not sure if these would have been inside or outside the car, because a couple of them were uh, leather or felt. So I can't imagine those would be on the outside. <clears throat> this was interesting. It kind of looked like a gun. Uh, I wasn't sure what it was. And I'm actually still not really sure what that is. If anybody knows, uh, let me know in the comments. Somebody's a camera collector here for sure. There's a nice selection of old 45 RPM records and an old record player. I've never heard of the name uh, Scott before for a brand name, but I'm guessing it's a low end model. some big scissors there. Here's something I've never seen at a flea market before. Okay. On the table here, these are uh, computer graphics cards. These go uh, for a few hundred dollars, and these are fairly modern ones, probably you know a couple years old. That's unusual, <clears throat> very unusual. And 
And this is definitely my era of video games here. The uh, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, looks like Game Boy games in there. And then these were a little bit before my time. The uh, Odyssey 2 games. These were, I think, the late 70s, very early 80s. And I didn't recognize any of the names. And then, of course, the consoles themselves. There's a Sega Genesis, an Atari. That's a 2600, but it's a later version of it. Um, a regular Nintendo, GameCube, PlayStation 1, a bunch of Xbox controllers. And this joystick here, I think, is a Nintendo joystick just based on the connector. I've never seen one like that for the Nintendo, though. I love these old tin toys like this. I would guess this is probably 1950s or 60s. And I have no idea what this would be for. This, uh, these two boards with nails sticking out of them. I don't know if that would be for a magic act or if that would have some sort of actual uh, practical purpose. Shut up. <laughs> popular demand here's some jewelry and I'm gonna move on now because I know nothing about jewelry And this breaks my heart, seeing these comics sitting out here in the sun. I can already tell that a lot of them are faded from the sun. I, I gotta tell you, I don't think it's just faded. Literally, everybody's coming up to that. So. That um, it's interesting. R2-D2 it's really cool there, I think, fun. is a cooler. That's pass. pretty awesome. Thank you, uh, Rob. <clears throat> yeah, what is this, G.I. Joe? or what is Yeah, it? those are G.I. Joe, when they did the whole space. The oh, original yeah. Space Force. <laughs> oh, okay, right, right. Yeah. So this one's actually more complete. A lot of times they're they're missing the windows. This also has a small shuttle. 
The small shuttle has its cannons attached. Oh yeah. This is the rear wing for this. Yep. Oh yeah, this one's broken. Attach. Yeah. So this one's actually uh, the better condition one. Cool. I was asking uh, 40 for this one for best dropper, and I was asking 60 for this one. Okay. Thanks. No problem. Now, this table here had some of the coolest stuff at the entire show. There's these little scenes here, which I guess you'd call them dioramas. Uh, they're all handmade by this guy here. And I think they were ranging in price from, I think, 40 to maybe $100 for the most expensive ones. And they're really nice. Um, they're almost like the type of thing you'd see in a museum. I was seriously considering buying one of these, but for whatever reason, I decided not to. And again, this is one of those things where I kind of wish I did. So, you know, if he's there at the next show, when I come back sometime, I'll probably pick one up. And let me know in the comments, which one of these uh, do you think I should have picked up? Which one's your favorite? And there you have it. That is the end of part one of two of the Mansfield Drive-In Flea Market in Mansfield, Connecticut. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. It really helps. I really would love to hit a thousand subscribers. That would be awesome. That would really make my day. So until next time, see ya.